Ah, uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's Wednesday, and you know what that means. It's time for the Wrestling Inc. AEW After Show, <laughs> and have we got a show for you. We've got Mercedes Monet, we've got Swerve Strickland, and we even got a street fight. So before we get into the three hours of power, allow me to introduce the crew. I'm being joined by the, oh, I'm Jack Farmer, but I'm being joined by the not yet Hall of Fame, but currently Hall of Farmer referee, <laughs> Jimmy Corderas, along with newcomer George Hermosa, who doesn't seem like he can be bothered to, to show up. Let me actually put our display names on here for everybody. Um, George Hermosa, for everyone who doesn't know, George Hermosa, I'm excited. Before I even let you talk, I'm going to get my little meandering in. Uh, for those of you who don't know, George Hermosa and I go way back, actually. The first time I ever had a chance to be on an after show, George Hermosa was the guy that gave me the chance. So here he is coming to Wrestling Inc. I'm excited to have you, George. What are your first words going to be? You see that? That's a full circle that we're doing right now. I was actually looking through my old magazines to see if I can find any pictures of uh, this guy or the, 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 the guy on <laughs> all the way to my to my left on the screen. I was going to maybe show him a picture from 25 years ago. But thank you. Thank you for everybody for, for having me. Thank you, Wrestling Inc. Uh, pleasure to meet uh, everybody here and happy to be here. You know, back in the day, uh, we're just going to get it started now. Fun fact, the reason I got to keep coming back is George had him start a little hashtag. Hashtag bring back Jack. I want to return the favor. <laughs> Hit us with a hashtag bring back George uh, if you enjoy his commentary here tonight. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. don't, then mind your own business. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but Jimmy, uh, before we get into the show and everything, man, you, you must have had a great time. This is practically your backyard. It, it is just downtown for me, you know, I'm all prepared, I, you know, representing, representing the brand here, you know, and representing the other brand uh, that's Canadian big time. So having a lot of fun, fun episode tonight, you know, I could, we may do a little nitpicking, but again, it was fun. I enjoyed for the most part. I got to say, too, about Tim Hortons, uh, I grew up in Tacoma, Washington, and in Tacoma, oh. Washington, the drinking age was 21, but in Canada, it was 18. So I spent <laughs> a good three years heading up to Canada having yeah. drinks, and let me tell you, nice. Tim Hortons was one of my favorite parts of Canada. I love yeah. Tim Hortons. And it's not just the coffee, it's the donuts and all the snacks, man. I, I, I have one just up the street for me, and my wife and I walk over all the time and just love it. And uh, just a little tidbit. Not only am I representing uh, one, I like to give little tidbits on my career every once in a while, uh, and possibly the only, as, as far as I know, referee in history to use instant replay mm. back in the day. That is a, that is a good little. You know why don't they do that more? I guess that would ruin a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, again, it Never doesn't. Mind. Make, yeah, if you do it a lot, then it doesn't make it special. But they did it in the Batista Undertaker cage match that they had on SmackDown. Oh yeah, where they did the, the double drop, and we couldn't. And uh, Mickey, the late great Mickey Henson, and I were discussing at ringside. Oh, what do we do? What do we do? And if I may, just a quick story and how that became yeah, about. One hundred percent. You know, they were going through the match, and we were, the original finish was yeah, they were dropped down together, and he and I would converse, and we would basically call it a tie. Mm -hmm. And Undertaker would retain the championship because you know, in the in the event of a tie, or yeah. you know. The, the champion retains. Yes. Yep. So uh, I just offhandedly, when they were discussing it and all that stuff, said, well, why don't we go to the instant replay? And then somebody went, yeah, why don't we? <laughs> you know, so yeah. I said, okay, here, when it happens, you and Mickey converse at ringside, go over to the table where Michael Cole and JBL are and ask for them to replay the fit. And then they did the split screen and the whole bit. And it's amazing how just an offhanded comment could lead to comment to lead mm -hmm. could lead to something. Is that when Edge cashed in uh, the 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 Money in the Bank when he when the won the world title? No, that was later when Mark Henry attacked. But that was that same night, right? Was it the same night? I, it could be. You know, some too many ref bumps. So some yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do. I do want to ask a simple question though, just because I live in Los Angeles. What the hell is a Tim Hortons? Oh, it's a I, coffee slash donut uh, franchise up here in uh, Canada that is uh, very well known. And it's more common than a Waffle House in Florida. Let's put it that way. <laughs> George, you got to go to Canada and go to one. I, I, like I said, the 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 morning after a good night of partying, it was a great, uh, 
it was mm-hmm. a great place to go check out. I do want to do the whole stadium stuff. So one day when I go see a Blue Jays game, I'll check that off my list. There you go. Well, everyone who's here with us, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, leave a five-star review, all that good stuff. We're going to start with a little new here. And I actually have a question for everyone who's in the chat or leave a comment about it because we have some really good folks in the comments who are good about letting us know their thoughts. Uh, we always start with news. And we uh, we have a couple news items that are WWE-related. Uh, do you prefer that we just do the biggest news stories going or would you prefer us to stick with AEW only? news stories here so for now we're going to stick with the ones we have but just let us know your thoughts on them uh the big news story that seemed to be blowing up as i was watching uh dynamite tonight was about ronda rousey actually in her memoir uh, our fight looking to be released next month and in it she was critical of vince mcmahon in an excerpt shared by inside the ropes uh presented with full context Rousey said that she described Ms. Uh, Vince McMahon as Emperor Palpatine uh, and that he played a real world pro wrestling version of Monopoly. Uh, went on to say it was, uh, and I'm summarizing this part, that he, the line between the character he played on TV and who he really was was blurred. Uh, Jimmy, uh, I got to go to you on this one because you've spoken to Vince McMahon. Mm-hmm. Um, it not it sounds like something didn't go well between him and, and Ronda Rousey. Not very happy about uh, her time there. No, it does sound that way. And I, obviously, I can't speak to what she saw because the Vince McMahon that I dealt with when I was there wasn't in that capacity. I was, you know, it was a business re- relationship I had with Vince McMahon, and you know, every once in a while, obviously, I got critiqued for my work, or I got, you know, a good job and a pat in the back, and. That was pretty much it. So all this stuff that's coming out now, you know, people are asking me, well, what do you think? What do you know? I don't know anything. This is all stuff beyond my, you know, scope. And it's hard for me to comment on this because this is a person that I didn't see. Mm-hmm. Do you know, does, does that yeah. make any kind of sense? And I, and I know a lot of people are out there and I get lambast, lambasted sometimes on, on the, the old Twitter machine where they say, oh, you're just covering up and you know this. And I, I don't know. These are all mm-hmm. accusations as of right now. And, you know, let the proper authorities take care of what needs to be taken care of and let the chips fall where they may. As far as what I think, uh, obviously, like you said, she has maybe a reason for saying what she said and mm-hmm. let her, you know, do what yeah. she needs to do about that sort of thing. And, you know, I, I again, I hate to sound like a fence sitter, but wait till the evidence comes forward and then, we'll go from there. Yeah. It's, it's always, it's gotta be weird when you have a certain relationship with someone and then someone else is a very different one. And, um, I've only, you know, had a, my toe in the pond of pro wrestling compared to you, Jimmy. Uh, but even I've already had situations where people feel one way about someone and other people feel totally different. And you're like, well, this was my experience. I can't really speak to everyone else's. Uh, mm-hmm. and it's not a suck up thing or anything. It's like, this is just, how my experience was uh george you are one of the biggest reader readers of books i know and you're one of the biggest fans of pro wrestling that i know are you going to be reading ronda rousey's book right away maybe not right away just because i kind of have a a stack of uh, myself uh i have to read al snow's she plugged al snow's book very soon Mm -hmm. uh i know jimmy corderas has a book out i'm i'm very interested in reading one uh his book as well uh not so much with not so much in a rush but i do again i do like to hearing these people's stories uh obviously it's it's a lot more wrestling related than it was her last book that she released um so you know obviously i, I like hearing the backstage stories the behind the scenes stories i kind of mm-hmm. dig that stuff but uh, it's it's on my list uh not so much in a rush but it's on my list obviously maybe with her book coming out she's gonna want and again i we all get the the gist of how the new cycle works uh with her book coming out one way to kind of get buzz for her book is to kind of, you know, kind of get some excerpts that are maybe from her book in order to gain interest uh, for, for it coming out. Not to say it's true or not. I'm not, I'm not, not, I'm not unvalidating what she's saying, but it's kind of everything that's coming out now is to order to kind of create buzz for her book. Yeah. It's um, and I should say here, uh, Clay Ford mentions, uh, Oh, she said a lot more than what you laid out there, Jack. She actually did. She said a whole lot, but frankly, I just don't want to read, you know, three pages of, of quotes. So uh, if 
if you want to see everything, feel free to look it up. Uh, but again, it was very critical of Vince McMahon. Uh, I think it'll be interesting. I think a lot of people are going to be reading that, especially with, as George, as you mentioned, the news cycle going around as it is. Uh, we got an injury news uh, update on Nick Aldis. PWI confirmed that Aldis uh, had a torn bicep and underwent surgery for it. Everything went smoothly to the point that WWE doesn't think Aldis will miss any upcoming appearances for the company. Uh, George, injuries are, are always terrible, uh, especially an on-air. Well, I mean, it's not, it doesn't matter if you're on-air. Injuries are just terrible. But uh, all this, obviously, uh, this time of year, injuries are bad. But it looks like he's not going to miss any time. So that's good. I'm just interested in, if was he training for like an in-ring return in some ways for the WWE? Or I know, or for maybe making his WWE in-ring debut? Who knows? I don't know. I'm just speculating here. But, um, you know, he got hurt. Just obviously he stays in great shape and that doesn't mean uh, somebody's uh, susceptible to get hurt. But I am kind of curious if he was training for something and and, and, and the injury happened. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jimmy, I feel like yeah. when Nick Aldis signed, that was our yeah. first. I think everyone was thinking, when's he getting in the ring? Because not only is yeah. he a talented wrestler, not only does he still clearly look like he can go, uh, but his character was also a little confrontational with wrestlers in a way that made you think he's got to he's got to be going for something here uh what are your thoughts on all this no i he i like like george said he's probably training for something and <laughs> i automatically thought at first the when he was announced as the authority figure for smackdown and you had a, adam pierce as the authority figure for raw you know you got two guys even adam pierce looks like he could still go as well no, mm -hmm. no doubt that nick aldis i think could still go uh, minus the injury that he's uh recouping from right now i thought somewhere down the line that it would lead to a clash of authority figures maybe at a survivor series mm -hmm. where you have a team raw versus team smackdown with them leading the charge for each brand or something along yeah. those lines uh i like i, I kind of like the idea that nick is doing a great job he's a great talker we know he can go in the ring it's it's a no-brainer i think and i think adam pierce is still good enough to go in the ring as well and he's he's knocking it out of the park as a as an authority figure as well so i in my mind, it's a no-brainer to have them somewhere down the road, down the road, have a confrontation. And just a quick thing, I just noticed the pile driver uh, deal behind George there. I love it. <laughs> oh, that yeah, George is a George has a lot of good memorabilia and, and throwbacks. I'm sure he can uh, he can probably show us a few of those at some point. But um, yeah, I agree with you though. I I'm a big Adam Pierce and Nick Aldis fan. I definitely wanted to see them have a match. Uh, I'd love to see Scrap Daddy get back in the ring. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, and really, yeah. really quickly, not to not not to harp on the the other t team, and I don't want to sound like I'm harping on on AEW at all. I think I don't want them to copy WWE. I don't want them to be a carbon copy because I think that's the only way to do things. Mm -hmm. But there needs to be some kind of authority on air authority figure, as opposed, like I know they say, well, I just got word from Tony Khan in the back, but we never see him. Yeah. There has to be a visual authority figure of some kind, whether, you know, there's a few guys out there. They got guys in the back who can do that role. You got a Mark Henry. You got an Arn Anderson. You got guys that can that, that can be that figure. You have a Scott Demore who's available who would fit mm -hmm. that role very well. I Just, you know, I'm just spitballing yeah. here. But, you know, uh, like I said, don't carbon copy WWE, but I think it would be nice to have that on air authority figure. I agree, and I think if they had it, I know we don't want to copy, but I think if they did it, kind of how if people remember William Regal in NXT where he wasn't on every week. He was on like maybe once or every month or two, and he would just give real quick, this is an announcement or this is clarifying something, and then he'd be done. He wasn't – he didn't have – he, he didn't have uh, like rivalries or issues. He was just, I'm here to bring some kind of, you know, order to this. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So I agree. I think that just having someone that we know, even if we know that Tony Khan's a guy, just from a show standpoint, it's nice to have someone who you can go to as like, this is the authority figure. Um, right. But let's get into, speaking of this, let's get into the show. Before we do, as always, I love to go ahead and say thank you to everyone who is watching. Again, please like, comment, share, subscribe, five-star review. All that stuff means a lot to us, and it's really helpful. Let us know what you're thinking of the show. Uh, if you're in the chat, if you're like Laura Rock, Killer of Demons, Sonny Sitar, I am Era, Error, and Aaron Mick, who are always here before the show watching along. That's always fun to see 
Dylan Matthews as well. Ethan Cruz, Tommy. Oh, Gigi Granda lurking. Uh, Huffman Elite Trading, Daniel Derry Sports Highlights, Mike Rouse, Jonathan Torres, Kenny Barcinas. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Clay Ford, Fernando, Angie, Danny, and of course, Majestic Marie, who had a rough night for her guy, uh, Eddie Kingston. We're going to mm. talk about Eddie Kingston. Um, uh, so let's talk about this show. Oh, yeah, by the way, and again, the lurkers, everyone who's here but not chatting. I appreciate all of you. I know you're there. <laughs> Uh, I always appreciate you being here. Um, we're going to start the show here. Oh, and I got to say, Bobby Decibel, I'm giving you a shout out. You don't watch it live, but you always leave a nice comment uh, for the AEW shows. I appreciate appreciate that. So I want to give you a shout out since you can't be here live. Um, Mercedes uh, Monet uh, comes out and we get a video package and she walks us through her journey to get here. She acknowledges her history with Willow Nightingale. Julia Hart and Sky Blue come out. They try to attack Mercedes with some chairs. Willow and Statlander make the save. Lights go out. When they come back on, Willow's caught thinking about attacking Mercedes. Later tonight, we're going to get Sky Blue and Julia Hart versus Statlander and Nightingale. We'll get to that part in a little bit. Uh, George, I want to talk to you first here. Uh, we have, there's been some critiques in AEW in the past about the women's division and its spotlight. But here we're seeing really a multi-layered story with a lot of different characters, a lot of different motivations. The hope when Mercedes Monet came to AEW was that these kind of opportunities would come up. Does it feel like they've planted the seeds to create more opportunities for the women's division? Are you feeling promising about this? 1,000%. I think this is what we've needed for for a while. Uh, we saw two prominent tag team matches uh, throughout the night, obviously on Rampage and Dynamite. And and I, I'd like to think that it's not just because of Mercedes, because AEW's women's division is so stacked in so many ways. Uh, but the division being stacked and the execution of it are two completely different things that we've seen in the last couple of years. But I'm happy that we're kind of are seeing like a focus in it i think it does go a long way when you do see women main eventing uh shows and i like to see it more obviously i mean you know i'm, I'm not going to give my opinion too much because then i go out down, that down the rabbit hole of the reho versus willow of last week maybe that was a swing and a miss but that's not to say that they shouldn't keep trying more and more with some of these women and in the putting into the big spotlight uh again i'm, I'm no we'll get into it but the other tag match with tony storm mariah mm -hmm. uh you know, all, that, that team as well. I, I think we're definitely seeing a nice step in the right direction. Uh, yeah. Jimmy, I want your thoughts on this opening segment um, as well as uh, <laughs> I think there's been a critique in AEW as well about new stars show up, but they don't tell us who they are. And then they have one of the biggest stars to ever be signed. And they give us the video package and she tells us who she is. I kind of almost felt like they were trolling us <laughs> a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. of, yeah, we know who, she, we know who Mercedes is. We don't, mm -hmm. need that. but I, right. I did, I did think it was a good move for them to do that. Did you like how Mercedes positioned herself and where she's going, going forward? I actually do. And I, I know a lot of people say, well, they went to the same well this week and, and began the show with the Mercedes. But I love the video package telling the story and telling a backstory because, you know, the, the one critique that AEW also gets is they cater to a niche audience. They cater to a hardcore crowd who will know who Mercedes Monet is. There are some out there who might not know the name. They know Sasha Banks from her previous iteration of her character but they may not know the Mercedes Monet character. So at least they're telling a little bit of a backstory, getting people familiar with who she is. And now, of course, coming out of the their um, the, the show on TBS beforehand, which is not my milieu, let's put it that way. I'm not a Big Bang Theory guy. But mm -hmm. at least they got a big following and they can hopefully capitalize on that going forward. Like last week, we saw a, a nice number at the beginning, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not really a pay attention to the ratings guy, but I was mm -hmm. curious last week, especially because of the debut of Mercedes and, and stuff. And the, as you saw, the numbers declined through the show. I think this week we're going to have a different uh, different number. Let's put it that way, especially at the end of the show. And mm -hmm. we'll get to that later. But I like that they're featuring, like George said, the women more. They're heading in a direction where they're trying to feature them more and they're not in that um, 1135 spot or 1125 mm -hmm. to 1135 spot as a kind of a filler before they get to the main event. So the, they've got the pieces in place. They're heading in the right direction. 
And what I like too, to your point about the uh, where where I'm at, it's seven thirty. But um, it's uh, <laughs> the um, what I like too, George. And this will be kind of the final part on this is uh, they had a little backstage segment where Statlander was like, "Hey, thanks so much," or you know, they they thank each other for helping each other. But then Willow, she says, "You've done enough already." I think what we've learned over the past few years is how subtle tensions in groups can be fascinating. And I like that there's already a subtle tension with reason with Willow and Mercedes, mm -hmm. but then also the friendship with Statlander. And you can already tell that this is a tension that's going to build up. Uh, what are your thoughts on the relationship between the three good guys? Yeah, you can say that. I, I mean, I dig it, especially because they didn't just assume, because uh, obviously a lot of people that watch AW, watch New Japan, watch Ring of Honor, reach all those things, but they're not just assuming that we all know what happened 10 months ago, 11 months ago in that match with Willow and, and, and Mercedes. Uh, so I liked that they kind of explained it. And in wrestling, it doesn't always have to, like, there's a lot of like, and I'm, I'm sure you're aware of this, Jimmy, a lot more, where you have the, like, like, what, what the one guy hits his tag partner by accident and then he turns around and says what are you doing oh it was an accident but it's like obviously in the world of wrestling it's like no you did it on purpose it's like no clearly I did it on accident but you know we kind of suspend that part of disbelief where in this case you kind of keep going with that where it's like obviously willow did not mean to injure mercedes but that doesn't matter to mercedes bottom line is you were in the ring when you injured me we got some unfinished business you took a championship that i was supposed to win you know, the mm -hmm. NW, NJB, NJPW Strong Women's Championship. And now, no matter how you put it, we're going to have beef. We're going to settle it. So I kind of like that they kind of keep that tension going of, you know, no, we're not friends. We can be cordial, but we're not. Don't think that we're friends just because we're on this side of the of, of the line. Yeah, I, I agree with you. But I have one question that doesn't pertain to that. It's a little bit uh, um, the CEO moniker that they have given her that it's a it's a good hook. Where they mm -hmm. get the crowd chanting CEO, and they they're all on board, mm -hmm. but they haven't explained to us what the letters stand for. You assume out of that, you know, in the business world, uh, chief executive officer is what the CEO usually stands mm -hmm. for. But in this instance, explain to us what is CEO? What do the letters stand for? As you Ooh. know, you know, I want to know. I, I really want to know. It could be because like FTR that had everyone trying to guess what does FTR stand for. <laughs> right. uh, I wonder what yeah, you're right. CEO could mean something totally different. That could be a fun swerve uh, for mm -hmm. all of us. Um, speaking of bosses, though, we had the young bucks show up with Okada and they give Mar Alex Marvez a tough time about not knowing Japanese <laughs> before we get to the first singles match of Okada where he takes on Eddie Kingston. For the Continental Championship, Majestic Marie, I'm sorry, we got to cover it. I know Eddie Kingston's your guy. Uh, it was Okada's first singles match. It was hard hitting. Okada gets the win and becomes the new Continental Champion. Post match, Pat comes out and implies he wants a shot at the title. Jimmy, a lot of hay has been made about Okada. His first singles match wins a championship. Did Okada deliver for you? For me, he did because he had a good, solid, hardcore, not hardcore, but hard hitting, like you said. Everything looked snug and felt snug and felt real. It's, it's, and again, hate to compare it to the other team, but it's like a Gunther kind of thing where every, mm -hmm. when you, when you see it, you go, Ooh, that looked like it connected. You know, everything looked authentic. And these guys really left it out there and they sold everything. They took their time. They told a story in the match. And when they went to the finish, one rainmaker, that's all it took. Mm -hmm. as, as opposed to having to, you know, you know I, George, I got to get one of these in every week. It's not a twisting, burning 450 hammer Phoenix splash that somebody kicks out of. It was yeah. one rainmaker. They're protecting the finish. And I like that. Mm hmm. Well, I, I want to follow up with you because uh, I, I did some journalistic stuff, Jimmy. I, mm -hmm. I did some uh, I did some research, and on Twitter, mm -hmm. at Globo Jim twenty three had a question for you. Said at Jimmy Corderas, watching Dynamite and curious on your take. Has AEW painted themselves in a corner? Eddie just lost to a short arm clothesline, but week after week, everyone gets hit with a move and weapon uh, and kicks out at one or two. Hard to invest in. Do you? What are your thoughts on the idea of using a quote unquote short arm clothesline to get a win? I don't have a problem with it. And I understand his point 
because that the athleticism and the things they do in the ring are so when you see for me, I don't, I get it's not everybody's cup of tea and some people like this kind of style, but when they do battling Canadian destroyers back and forth where you're not selling anything and it looks like it doesn't matter, that doesn't resonate with me. This Rainmaker reminds me of the old JBL uh, clothesline from hell. Mm -hmm. Nobody kicked out of it. That's right. his finish. Protect the finish. Nobody kicked out of uh, Undertaker's tombstone. Nobody kicks out of... Um, Shawn Michaels super kick and when they do when it eventually does happen it actually mm. means something now yeah. when everybody's kicking out of everything you know sometimes you lose the audience but I like the fact that they're protecting his finish here and making that the Rainmaker means and it's got a good moniker the Rainmaker it's got a good name a good ring to it very cool name and uh by the way if you I always say with his entrance music if you had pitched me I'm gonna like his song is gonna start with the sound of a coin drop, and I'm like, that sounds dumb. But then I hear the music, I'm like, that sounds awesome. Uh, well, wouldn't it be cool that, if you can cut, somehow do and in, in, incorporate in his entrance music that it starts with it sounds like the falling rain, the rain maker, yeah. you know, like where he points up, and then on the video screens, you see rain coming down or something should, like that. I don't they know. should use water to come down when he comes out instead of pyro, he uses hydro. Ah, <laughs> uh, cool. George, I want your thoughts on this one. One of the bits I really enjoyed about this was Okada cheating with the eye gouge while the ref's back was turned, the ref stopping it once he saw it. Uh, and then the fact that he beat someone who is as beloved as Eddie Kingston. Okada is someone I think a lot of people in AEW are going to naturally want to love. But when you see him cheating like this and beating someone we all already love, like Majestic Marie, it's easy to to boo him it's easy to hate him what about what how do you how did you like this start for okada i i mean i liked it overall my only criticism is that i i wish it was the main event I, obviously you can't have the main event over copeland and cage so i i would have moved it maybe this match to the next week you know okada especially with the way they're building him okada being in the main event or being in a championship map championship match should be the main event of a show i would have saved it for next week uh still have maybe go a little bit longer because i feel like when you're in that spot of right after the opening segment and you're not the main event you're only l working with so much uh that you can do because you know obviously being the opening match is a different kind of tone than being in the main event i th that's my only critique other than that i like you said i i do dig that the rainmaker just one time uh I believe like Jake Roberts said at one time when they asked him, like, how does it feel that, you know, everybody kicks out of the DDT? He said, nobody kicked out of my DDT. And, right. it, it, you know, so little, little things like that where I feel like, you know, it doesn't matter what everybody does. But as long as, you know, like you said, that that specific finish of Okada is protected, I'm all for it. Uh, yeah, like I said, it, it wasn't bad. I wish they would have given, given the spotlight a little bit more on Eddie after the match. I feel like it was very like, a hey, move out of the way. Pac's going to come out. My, I guess my only second critique, mm -hmm. but other than that, other than that, I mean, it was perfectly fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with you on both critiques. I do wish it was the main event. Maybe if they just did this next week instead or did something else, because I agree it would have made him feel like a bigger deal. Uh, in the moment, I didn't actually think about it until you mentioned it, though, so I can't really critique. And I do feel like Kingston got a little shoved to the side. Jimmy, what are your thoughts? No. No, I agree with that. And and they did this last week as well, because after they had that tremendous debut for, for Mercedes, well, she looked like a million bucks. She mm -hmm. looked like a star. And it was a great presentation, great debut for her, because for new viewers tuning in, because they made it feel like they made her feel like a big deal. They made her feel like a big star. Now, mm -hmm. after that, we got Joe and, um, oh my goodness. Now I'm, I'm blanking out. We had the championship match right after that. With, for, uh, uh for the AEW last, with Joe. So last, Joe and, last week. Last week or, I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Early yeah, in the show. With Wardlow. With Wardlow. With Wardlow. With Wardlow. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Uh, brain cramp. Sorry, I got, I got stuck on today and I was like, yeah, I know. Anyways, yeah. 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 But okay. that's, that was the formula they used last week as well, where they put that champion. I know what the I thought process was. They mm -hmm. want to continue that hot start and keep people invested, but the end of the night with the, the women's tag match last week that, didn't resonate as you can tell by the numbers unfortunately in the ratings at least tonight they ended the night with something that mattered and made sense especially for the market they were in mm -hmm. absolutely and uh speaking of the market obviously canada uh, lionheart chris jericho had a match with hook uh basically hook hits a suplex right off the bat rings jericho's bell 
the hook kind of dominates most of this one. Jericho gets a little bit of offense in before get, getting hooked in the red rum and choked out. Uh, they end it with a fist bump, but later Jericho says that Hook is a future world champion and he's every bit as bad as he says he is. Uh, but he has a proposition for Hook next week. Uh, George, um, we uh, we often say, if I go on, on Twitter, I feel like there's a lot of people who have strong opinions of Jericho. But I look over his record and I, I mean, he's... Uh, Action and Dreddy's beat him. Orange Cassidy's beaten him. Now Hook has beaten him. He's literally saying this guy is the future. Do we give Jericho enough credit for putting in work to make other people stars? I don't. Th I, I think yes and no. I, I think he does put people over. But then you look at the aftermath of an Action and Dreddy and how kind of that fizzled out. I mean, not Action's fault, not Jericho's fault, maybe even not Tony's fault. But you just kind of see how it played out, and it's like, oh, did he maybe put over the right guy? Uh, you know. So we'll see. It's a matter of. Let's see. Let's see what's next. I think him putting in Orange, him putting over Orange, that did a lot for Orange's career. I think Orange Cassidy is one of the unsung heroes of AEW, uh, and we're gonna see what happens with Hook. Uh, I, I kind of get the criticism of a Jericho. I mean, it, it, it's hard because he's put in so much good work not just for AEW, but just professional wrestling in general. So it's kind of hard to just kind of brush him away after everything that he's done. You know, so, so I'm kind of I I am curious on what is going to happen with him and hook so I, i'm going to be tuned in for that but as far as getting the credit i think he does to some extent but i also think that he doesn't in terms of like people realizing just the impact that he's had not just in aew but just the overall landscape you know his match with omega at wrestle kingdom you know him having all these outside ventures with the Jer jericho cruise and giving a lot of those wrestlers opportunities to get over on a whole nother venture like a cruise so yes and no if that's a i know it sounds like a cop out but Yes, I yeah. know. <laughs> well, I mean, Majestic Marie says, uh, where are those guys now after Jericho um, on Ring of Honor, Rampage, or just sitting in the back? I, I don't really feel that's on Jericho. Yeah, though. but whose like, fault no. is that? This, yeah, it's not on Jericho. That, that, that falls on creative. They, uh, they, they, I'm sorry. They, it's that old, that old adage, creative has yeah. nothing for you. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. it's it, it's it's a little I, – I feel like he's doing everything he can at that point. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, unless for all I know, he's going back and be like, okay, now take everything away from him. Right. But I can't imagine why he would do that. Uh, Jimmy, I, I want your thoughts on Jericho versus Hook and, and where this is going. But also, I want to talk about one of our previous critiques of AEW in the past has always been letting giving things time to breathe. Mm -hmm. This one felt like I had some time to breathe. We got the story beat, but also now we've got the quote-unquote hook for next week. What's the proposition from Jericho? So the story's having time to sort of develop. Do you like that? Or where, where are you at with the story? I like that they're leaving us hanging. I like that they're mm -hmm. leaving us guessing. And that's what the, the thing is. And that's what the beauty is of this form of entertainment. Not knowing what's coming next. We want anticipation. And that's the important thing. Because everybody nowadays wants instant gratification. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They want to know. And, and they think they're in the know. And sometimes, you know, just when you think you have all the answers, we change the questions is, mm -hmm. is how Roddy Piper or I change the questions is how Roddy yeah. Piper used to pay, do it. And that's what I like about this. And as far as Jericho uh, helping elevate the next generation of talent, that's his goal. And he realizes yeah. that he could lose every match from now until the end of his career. And Jericho is still going to be in the top echelon of, of, of uh, performers ever. And he feels it's his duty to elevate that next generation. And he's doing it the right way. Tonight's match, uh, my my only thing from tonight's match, I like the idea of him getting, because of the back history of Taz and mm -hmm. him and ECW and the whole bit, mm -hmm. uh, I like the story being told that him taking those suplexes and holding the back and selling and allowing him to sell. I only wish that Hook, instead of walking around looking at the crowd, almost looking for... Uh, some kind of gratification th from the audience, kind of every time he dropped them and the referee would check on him, kind of stared daggers. Yeah, ask him. that'd be dope. Know, that that would have been I, awesome. You know what I mean? I, I know we have an I quit match later, but Hook being the guy goes, ask him if he's had enough. Yeah. Ask him if he's had, you know, and that sort of thing. And at the end, because it, we all know that Hook is Taz's son, have Taz show some more emotion. I know he's trying to not be partial but again it's his son in the ring 
And yeah. he just beat Chris Jericho, one of the best of all time. At least stand up there at the table and give a standing ovation to your son at a boy and let the camera shot get him. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 they got some with hook, man. He's definitely, he's definitely sunk his teeth into the audience. The crowd loves him. Uh, so I hope this works out for me. Majestic Marie with the super chat says, wasn't blaming Jericho. I know you weren't. It was just a discussion point. To be fair, the, the, the reason I read that out, uh, Majestic Marie is it is reflective of what I see on the internet. I think a lot of people see that. Right. So I, I try to, I try to reflect what I can from what people are talking about. Mm -hmm. Uh, Speaking of what people are talking about, Adam Cole was talking tonight, baby. Hey, uh, he was, <laughs> I love it. Uh, Adam, he's upset that Wardlow lost his match for the championship, and he wants Wardlow to make things right, and this time he better not screw it up. Uh, George, I'll go to you for this one. I, I don't know what your thoughts are on the Undisputed Kingdom. I've always felt like I've liked the pieces – but it just never landed with me, I think, because of the injury to Adam Cole. And I I feel like it wasn't really working. But now Adam Cole it, with the pre-recorded segments and now him getting mad at Wardlow, I feel like they're starting to get a groove with this. Where do you land on the Undisputed Kingdom? Man, this is this one's tough because I want people to like me. Um, I, I, I'm just not feeling You're it. You're in the it, wrong it, business, George. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not feeling it. I don't know. I mean, maybe just no MJF, Adam Cole's injured. You know, it's, it's or, already they're already kind of making Wardlow kind of being like like kind of like a lackey, you know, like, oh, you boo you because you didn't win. The, like, I don't know. It just I don't know what it is. I just, I, I wish, I wish there was more because I, there was so much potential with the storyline dating back to like all in and the pay-per-views after, but I'm, I'm, I'm just not feeling it. I, I'm watching the segments and I'm just like, man, like they're, they're already making Wardlow look bad. I know they're already trying to say like, you know, if that's the case, then you better make sure that the, the, the kingdom keeps the championship. So kind of, kind of like that, like Jimmy said, I always like them leading us for, or at um, you know, making us wait for something, right? I always, I always say to produce a wrestling show, you should always have people um, regret not latching, not watching last week, and make people look forward to next week. Um, mm. So I, I, I like that aspect of like, oh, so how are what's going to be the kingdom? I know they're going to be in the AEW tag title tournament, so maybe a push for them to be like the double champion, so things like that. But as far as like the overall undisputed kingdom goes, I, yeah, just. Thank I, I saw a comment. Somebody said it wasn't just me. So thankfully it isn't just me, but yeah, it just, mm. I, I, I want somebody to tell me the good in the storyline because I've kind of waited, waited around maybe for three months already since the unveiling of the devil. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy, I, I think, and I've said before, I, it didn't land with me again. I think Adam Cole being in a wheelchair while he's trying to be the devil at the same time. And, not really understanding where things fit all while other groups were being formed. It, it felt lost. I always have this, this saying I, I like to use, it takes a long time to turn a big ship. And it feels like AEW has slowly been turning a lot of the things that it hasn't been working. And it feels like now they're working on undisputed kingdom. And it, again, this is my opinion. You can say I'm, I'm missing the boat here, but Adam Cole, now again, now pre-recorded segments. I feel like he looks cool again. He looks menacing now that he's not in a wheelchair or on crutches. Uh, and this idea that clearly Wardlow is going to be going against the Undisputed right. Kingdom. I feel like we're starting to get the train back on track. Am I being too optimistic here? Or is, is, is there some light at the end of the tunnel? No, I don't think you're being too optimistic. I think there, there were definite seeds planted because obviously – Adam Cole saying that he is disappointed with Wardlow. And right now, I think the intentional flub, I should be, I mean, mm -hmm. you should be the heavyweight champion right now. That was an intentional line thrown in there. That that was not just planting the seed. That was giving it a little water as well. And I like that. And uh, hopefully Wardlow doesn't get Wardlowed again because yeah. they, they missed the ship with him the first mm -hmm. time around. Let's slowly build that back up. There's no rush to get him back to that high level that he was, you can get him back there, but take your time because you have a swerve, you have a Samoa Joe, you have guys that can fill that spot for now. Take your time, build it up, and maybe you can get, you can strap that rocket to the guy because he's he's an AEW original, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I agree. We'll have to see how that one continues, uh, but we got a part that I thought was uh, one of the, the great takeaways of the night besides that main event. 
Will Ospreay comes out and he apologizes for being a jerk last time he was in Canada. Talks about how great the match Danielson had on Collision was. Says that Danielson's shoes are too small for him. And now he wants to face Shibata to show how he measures up to Danielson now and show how much he's grown. Jimmy, there is a list of things I loved from this segment. Uh, the big one is... But I, you know what? I'm just going to let you go for it. What were your thoughts on this? You know, I'm going to keep it brief here because there's not a lot more that I could say than it's an infectious energy that he brings to the ring now, which is a side of him I've never seen before. I've seen matches of his on, you know, on the interweb. And I've always thought his in-ring was, there's not, his good. Mm -hmm. He's really, really good in ring. But that's the problem. It's not just your in-ring talent. You have to present your character. You have to present your personality. You have to let the audience tune into you and want to see you as well. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's not, he, he, like I said, he's great in the ring, but now we're starting to see Will Ospreay, mm -hmm. not just the wrestler Will Ospreay. And I think yes. that's a good trend. And it's a good start and people are buying in right now. So that's a good start. Yeah, George, the thing about why well, first I just got to say those Osprey chants during his entrance just feel like wild superstar, like mm -hmm. awesome. Like when he's doing that, I feel like that is a one of a kind crowd reaction. The way they do that and the way they don't cheer it until like way late in the song <laughs> is so, so cool. I, I guess how do you not in that crowd chant Osprey? But yeah. uh, George, I want to talk to you about the way Osprey talks. Because I think one of the things that separates AEW, good or bad, from the other guys is they feel less produced. Sometimes I think it's great. Sometimes I think it, it doesn't do them any favors. But Osprey is great on the microphone, but he absolutely does not feel produced. It feels like he's just out there speaking whatever's on his mind, and it comes out great, bruv. Uh, tell me about uh, Osprey and kind of his delivery. And, and to Jimmy's point, what makes him so infectiously... Uh, uh enthusiasm how do you infectious enthusiasm for his so just to, yeah. just like a quick like side note because everything that i feel great about how natural osprey is on the mic i feel the complete opposite about mercedes i don't know just the way she talks maybe like ew, the cadence that she gives and the tone it just doesn't feel natural like i don't know like i, I feel like those words I, I just it just does feel weird to me but again three six or 180 Look at Osprey. Th th this is a guy that I want to go drinking with. This is a mm -hmm. guy that I just want to play Madden with. This is a guy or yeah. FIFA or whatever they play, you know. Mm -hmm. But this is just a guy <laughs> that, like, yeah, I, I just – he's so natural. He's, he's, he's so, like – friendly in, in terms of you know like the tone he just wants to be like wow like what a cool guy that guy is right and that, i don't mean cool as an orange cassidy cool as in like a like a jack farmer or jimmy corderas like man let's just all go hang out let's just all you know let's be, let's just be friends and i don't know I, I feel like there's not a lot of people that have that kind of cadence like a will osprey so yeah I, i'm all for it and you know even the bruv like obviously that's going to be probably if it was wwe there'd be a big bruv t-shirt right yes, <laughs> you, know, you know but again that's part that's part of what wrestling is right you kind of take something that you can market and you you know blow it up even bigger than what it is but yeah like I, i'm all for i got I, I don't think he's like the greatest on the mic like you know maybe everybody thinks he is but he doesn't need to be it's it, you know mm -hmm. he, he doesn't need to be the greatest on the mic he just he just there he's will osprey this is the man this is the guy this is the future this is you know no uh, pun intended mm -hmm. I, i'm all in on will osprey mm -hmm. i i would like next time i have to do something that is kind of scary or intimidating i want will osprey to like pump me up and be like <laughs> bruv the shoes don't even fit you bro you know whatever he is i'll be like yeah i'm gonna come running through a wall <laughs> uh Jimmy, the last thing I want, I want to say about this, and this was actually what I think were the low-key great things about tonight with AEW, and we'll touch on it quite a bit more, but uh, Shibata versus Osprey is one of these matches that is like a dream match that mm -hmm. I think historically AEW would have just done, and they would have been like, oh, yeah, it's a dream match. It's great. You're right. supposed to love it. But we wouldn't really – like, okay, but what? Why, why should I care? The small detail in the promo of – Daniel uh Brian Danielson beat him last week. I want to show I can beat him too. And I have some history with him. Uh, let's do it next week. Now I'm like, oh, there's a reason for mm -hmm. this match. And now this dream match, this great matchup, 
has a reason for it and it has stakes. And it's just, I thought AEW did a great job this week of adding just those little bits to go, oh, that's why it's happening. It's the little things that matter that I say on here all the time. Give me reasons to get invested in this match. Yes, it's fun to have that. Oh, this is a this would be a great match for a one time off, you know, uh, or you know, whatever the wording is for you know, a, a one off. Hey, this is a great, great to see so so versus so so. That's awesome. Give me a reason to want to see it as opposed to these are two great talents. Let's put them in the ring, and that's what yeah. they've been doing a lot in the past. Now they're starting to get it where oh. The audience wants to get invested in the match for a reason. They gave me a reason to want to see this match now. Yes. And I like that. I know. I know. Yeah. Just to kind of sorry, I just want to add in real quick, just because every time I hear the two guys just get put together out there, and and correct me if I'm wrong, isn't that one of the biggest reasons why Austin left that one time because like there was no buildup for him or against Brock, right? Like you guys are throwing away all this money because you just want to put us out there without any buildup. You know, and we all thought like, oh, that guy's got a good point. Nowadays, it's kind of it hasn't really changed. Like we all kind of we we get we all like to see three matches, but man, if there was a story behind those matches, good lord, yeah, that's right. Fantasy matches—that's the words I was looking for. Fantasy match. Sometimes they come back. <laughs> yeah. The ones and, and, these and I thought it was kind of great. Later in the show, we'll just touch on it now. Shibata does have a match against Kevin Matthews. Fairly dominant. Shibata gets to win. Kind of reminds us, oh yeah, he's really dangerous. He can win mm -hmm. matches. Uh, but Jimmy, last thing on this, just your thoughts really quickly on this, uh, that matchup. And also uh, let people know how cool and big and, and special it is for a guy like Kevin Matthews to be given a platform like that in a match like that, even though he doesn't come out with the win. Like it's very it's a big deal that they give him that opportunity. Right. And he didn't lose anything in this match. Uh, yes, uh, Shabbat wins the match, but at the same time. Uh, you can get over without going over, like we say. And also, at the same time, he showed that he could hang. Mm -hmm. And that's what the people were probably going, oh, this might be like a glorified uh, enhancement match. But it wasn't. Yeah. he, he it, it was tit for tat. You know, they, yeah. they he hung well with Shibata. And, you, you know, good on him. Yeah. It, it did him. It did more favors for him in this loss. And it, it, there were more pluses than negatives. Let's put it that way. Absolutely. Um, later, we, we move on. We get Tony Storm and Mariah R May versus Deanna Perrazzo and Thunder Rosa. Story here is Thunder Rosa pins the champ, and Perrazzo's a little upset about it. Uh, she didn't get the win here. Uh, George, typically, I would say, like, it feels like Thunder Rosa kind of just got thrown back in to this situation here without much build. But it feels also right now with Mercedes Monet and all this stuff happening that the women's division's heating up really fast. And I kind of I'm excited and glad that they're not dragging their feet and they're sort of just throwing her into the fire. Uh, do you think it was the right call putting her in this situation and putting her I mean, as someone who clearly seems like the next person to get a title shot? I mean, let me ask you guys this. Who beat Thunder Rosa for the AEW Women's Championship? Was it Tony Storm? Nobody. 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 Oh, that's right. That's why that's I can. Right. Nobody. So it kind of does make sense, you know. Finally, and it, that that's always kind of been my thing. We're like, oh, I never lost a championship. Well, let's give you the opportunity to do that. So I, I think it makes perfect sense for her to kind of throw it in there. I like the dissension, you know. And it doesn't always have to be like, you know, oh my god, I hate you now. But like, you know, Deanna, people should want to get, especially if you're not like a legit tag team, you should want to get the pin over the champion. Like, you should want to get that glory. You should want to get it. So I, I like that Deanna was a little upset about it and didn't really like. All right, well, we still won, but it would have been nice for if I would got the pin but yeah i kind of like that now it can be you can have a, a three-way now you can have a one-on-one -on -one with with thunder and storm you know thunderstorm i guess you can call them but yeah <laughs> now yeah you, you, you're presenting like all these possibilities of just like you can even have a four-way and kind of throw mariah may in there who i think is 1000 percent the future of, of the aew women's division yeah jimmy this was a um again it I, i'm looking at this picture i you add thunder rosa to it who of course i questioned her being back there that quickly, but clearly Thunder Rosa is a star. Clearly Thunder Rosa mm -hmm. as a performer deserves to be in that spot. Uh, but again, this is a situation where you have little tensions. There's to George's point, Deanna and Thunder Rosa don't hate each other, but there's that little bit of like, Hey, mm -hmm. you're kind of stepping on my toes here. Mm -hmm. I'm in the middle of something. Uh, you're buttoning in on my dance and it just adds more tension. And now I feel like this, we have two titled, Two championships now that have a bit of a roster fighting for them. 
No, absolutely. I like the way they set it up. It made perfect sense because of the, the way that whoever the producer was or whoever put this match together, the blind tag leading to this situation we had afterwards. That's what it was. It was the blind tag. And she goes, wait a minute, you tagged yourself in for this? This is my mm-hmm. moment. You know, that's the look we got. And like I said, a lot of people are in for visual gratification over, uh, I hate to put it this way, intellectual stimulation, facial expressions tell stories too as well uh i like to refer to movies and stuff like that we see uh one of my favorite actors of all time robert de niro Mm -hmm. go to raging bull yeah the jake lamotta story there wasn't a lot of action in that movie but you felt his emotion in that movie you know what i mean and that's what i'm feeling here i'm feeling emotion and that's what i like i'm one of those uh, yeah okay you can call me one of the old fart on the on the uh the veranda screaming, get off my lawn. That's fine if you think that way, but I like that presentation. It doesn't have to be, uh, we talked about Will Ospreay earlier against Shibata. Just tone it down a little bit. Make the, You can do your big moves, but take your time with them and put them in where they need to be placed instead of just doing them to get them in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it actually reminds me of what uh, Dax Harwood said once is, uh, no one in the audience knows what a drop kick feels like, but they all know what disappointment feels like. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and uh, other, I love, what, I just, yeah, to your yeah, point, what, Jimmy. One of my, no, one of my favorite sayings is there's no losing in learning, only learning. Sorry. There's no losing, only learning. There's no failure, only opportunities. And there's no problems, only solutions. And that's yeah. the approach I think AEW needs to take right now. Yeah. Love it. Uh, we have Swerve Strickland. He says Joe's running from him, uh, and he's good at choking people out. We get an open challenge. Butcher accepts. Crowd's very excited to be in Swerve's home. A dominant win by the number one contender who wins with a submission, like he said he would do earlier, choking someone out. The story happens afterwards, though, where Joe comes out and says that the problem with Swerve is he believes he's great. And if he keeps believing he's great, everyone else in this arena who's a bunch of losers are going to think they're great. Uh, so Joe needs to handle this right now. Don Callis comes out and mentions, hey, Takesh has got the same record you do, Swerve. Uh, you guys should have a match to see who gets the title shot. Swerve agrees. Uh, George, what I enjoyed about this segment is open challenge for some reason we like the guys who give open challenges and we're we're growing to love swerve more butcher's a big bruiser who feels like a samoa joe uh type of wrestler that can take a loss and it doesn't really hurt anything and again he said he was going to choke someone out and he choked them out i thought it was kind of a cool setup what were your thoughts on the match and promos I mean, I think the match was what it was. I mean, it was just there to showcase uh, Swerve, who definitely needs to be showcased every single week on a regular basis. Uh, so I like it. I, I mean, I, again, it's the littlest things, the simplest things that people think that it's just so irrelevant. But just having Takeshita come out and say, hey, you know, you guys got the same record. Why don't you guys fight to see who maybe I know it's not an officially a number one contenders championship match, mm-hmm. but you know, just kind of, you know, you guys got the same record, whoever win is going to get obviously uh, ahead in the rankings, but yeah, just the simplest things. It just, it, it, it baffles me how, how people just kind of like, you got to build a foundation, right? Mm-hmm. Because without the foundation, the house is just going to crumble down. So it's little, House. little, little, yeah, swerves out. Yeah, anybody. Um, yeah, it, little things like that. So I, I'm all for it. My only beef is like, I know it's kind of trying to rise up the rankings, and I know Osprey only has a couple wins in AEW, but Osprey did beat Takeshita. So, so that's why I, I like that it's not officially a number one contenders match, but, you know, it's still relevant to the rankings as well. Yeah. And it's, uh, um, Jimmy, again, kind of going back to what we just said, I think if you had just done Swerve versus Takeshita next week, which I think a historically is something the AEW would have done, and then on commentary maybe quickly said they have a similar ranking or something, uh, because of this promo, and by the way, your fellow countrymen are not fans of Don Callis. <laughs> but, no, uh, no, not at all. <laughs> uh, but uh, there's a story. I, I get it now. And they have the match to go, oh, this is why it's happening. Right. Again, you're giving me reasons. And and if I can get back to Samoa Joe coming up, man, I am a big Samoa Joe guy right now, especially this iteration of him. I've always been a fan of his, but I'm a super fan of his right now because he is hitting it out of the park big time. I almost don't want to see him lose that title anytime soon. No. 
know. Yeah, I know Swerve is on the way on the rise and the people are behind him, but Joe is just man, the the, the way he presents himself, he's he's such a badass, you know, with the title and, and he comes out in the suit now, which really, really uh is different from him from what we used mm -hmm. to see for him from him in the past. He presents himself well as their champion. He's a good representative as a champion. Oh man. Uh, I don't I, I can't say enough good things about him. And as far as Swerve versus Takesha, I'm going to wait and see when, the, again, another thing I'm looking forward to seeing and seeing where this goes. And Don Callis, yeah, no, nobody in Canada likes you either. <laughs> <laughs> he I, he gets incredible reactions. I mean, my notes say Don Mysterio heat. Uh, right. It's just, it's just incredible. It's funny, it's funny how him and Christian get more heat in their home country than they do down in the state. <laughs> I can imagine backstage that'd be like, are you worried that you're, you know, since this is your hometown, maybe people will, uh, they won't boo you. Oh no, they'll boo. <laughs> <laughs> or, or even if you tell Christian that, are you worried that they're going to cheer you since you're in your hometown? Yeah. Just give me a minute on the mic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just, uh, great stuff. And uh, of course, again, to kind of to an earlier point, Takeshita has a match with Rocky Ramiro. Takeshita, very good in the ring. Uh, Rocky Romero, by the way, no slash himself, a legend. Uh, George, I know Rocky Romero, pretty popular here in Southern California. Uh, any thoughts on this match between these two? Oh, well, yeah, he, he, he's, uh, you know, he's pretty, pretty. I think he's, he lives in the valley, if anything. Um, yeah. man, that suicide dive and Takesha catching them into the oh. suplex. Oh my god, like wow. Um, again, it, not, not to again, I want to give. Rocky Romero, Butcher, like all the credit in the world. But obviously, these were to showcase Takeshita. These were to showcase Swerve. Mm -hmm. This was, you know, they have something brewing for next week. Why not show them what they can do for that clash next week? Um, so, yeah, I, the, these these serve a purpose. So, I, I, I'm all for it, especially like a Rampage. I know Dynamite's kind of the flagship show, but I think it's perfect for like, for, for like a Rampage. So, yeah, I mean, no complaints for me. And really quickly, I don't think people realize what it takes for someone to catch someone like that outside the ring when they're flying. Mm -hmm. I don't. Uh, I, it's different when they're coming straight on, and and you know you're hitting them square. But he was turned, and he yeah. caught him basically one arm. Mm -hmm. I mean, and and I just went, whoa, man, that's incredible. Yeah, Takeshita is is great. In fact, let me. This is my uh, my spicy question for you, Jimmy. Takeshita's fantastic, and he's so good in the ring. And a lot of times you think pairing someone with a manager who can get great reactions is a great combination. But is Don Callis almost outshining Takeshita a little bit? Because Don, I feel like everyone hates Don Callis so much. Takeshita's great in the ring, but I feel like I really hate Don Callis. Mm. No, I hear what you're saying, but it's almost like a guilty by association thing. Mm -hmm. And and I think it, in this case it works. I think... Uh, you know, having a mouthpiece that works in the case of Swerve, for example, I don't think he needs uh, the Prince with him anymore no. because there's little things he does during the match where he gets the crowd going, whose house, you know, yeah. during the match. And it's taking away a little bit from the match. So I think Swerve could slowly move away from having him at presence. I don't know what you do with uh, Prince Nana after that, but uh, in the case of Takeshita, um, Take I'm pronouncing it all. No, because I'm all, yeah. I'm all, I'm all amped no up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, and, and Don Callis yeah. has me frazzled. So what can I tell you? But I, like Can't I said, he, right now he's a good mouthpiece for him. Uh, uh, if you took Nana from Swerve, I don't know how you do that without everyone being bummed out though. Cause everyone loves Nana too. No, uh, I know. I get that. But yeah. at the same time, I, he doesn't need him. Yeah. He's, I mean, the Swerve I, is I, really getting good on the mic right now. So he, uh, you know, yeah. you don't need, a, he doesn't need a mouthpiece. <laughs> Um, we got a main event here. Uh, I guess the first main event of the night, uh, Adam <laughs> Copeland versus Christian cage. I quit match TNT championship. We get a video package earlier in the night. Crowd is hot. Leafs versus Bruins, uh, brawl in the box, uh, fun moments, mama Wayne hockey sticks, uh, the patriarchy, the good guys come out. Uh, eventually Adam Copeland gets the win. Jimmy, this feels like a championship for your whole, the whole country, even though Christian's <laughs> also Canadian. It uh, was, but I want to hear yeah. your thoughts on this one. No, it was entertaining from the word, from the opening bell, from the word go, you know, and all the fun, of course, I'm wearing my Maple Leaf shirt representing here, my Jersey. And they did it all 
they made it Canadian for that audience. They catered to that audience. Yes, I know sometimes people go, oh, they went over the top with it. No, it doesn't matter. People were into it. The whole night, the whole match, they were standing. They were on their feet. Little things. I'm glad the camera didn't follow all them into the ladies' room. Then you know, <laughs> let's let's <laughs> we have some boundaries we gotta keep, but at this it, and there's little things I could critique and say, hey, you know what? Was 12 kicks to the nether regions uh more than enough? I think it was a little excessive, but at the same time, just uh, if anybody deserved it, Jay did. So what do you go? Can I? I sorry, Christian did. And and bringing <laughs> out the the spike thing, mm, boy, that looked mm. deadly. Yeah. And uh, uh, it was fun. I enjoyed it. What? Well, that, that's all that matters at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, I watched this, and first off, the the Leafs and the Bruins, the jerseys. Yes. Uh, I and the hockey fight. It was like a legit hockey fight. Yeah, I loved it. I I I even said on Twitter, I I love this, and I'm not going to argue with anyone who disagrees. I feel oh, like, yeah, go ahead. No, no, sorry to catch you off. And, and yeah, the little nuances that, from Taz. This is where the announced team comes in, and it's very important. Making all the hockey references, the cross checking, the slashing, and all that stuff. It, Taz yeah. was well aware and put those out there for those who may not be uh, hockey aficionados. You know what I mean? So little things that matter. Taz is good on commentary. I'm yeah. a big fan of Taz. And he, uh, yeah, he was great. And like I said, with that, with the brawl, I was like, you know, I saw someone on Twitter say, clearly those were plants, like the, the jersey. Like, Who cares? It was fun. And like, so it was like, ooh, it was too, like, like decades long history built up and they're making a joke. No, it was fun. It was fun. I don't care. It was a fun moment. Uh, and George, uh, the nether region kicks. I said this on Twitter. <laughs> I feel like that was probably the most realistic way an I quit match would go. <laughs> That's like, I feel like I'm, I'm surprised no one else has done that in an I quit match. But uh, how did you feel about this? Well, this felt like just a feel good, fun moment. It definitely didn't feel good to watch. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it was everything it needed to be. Um, the, the scenery, like, like, oh man, just the, the fact that they were giving them a standing ovation even before the match started was, I thought it was tremendous. I mean, that that is everything that you probably would hope for uh, to be, you know, after 40 years of friendship and just, man, like, here we are. Like, who would have thought, right? Like, at some point 10 years ago, we all thought that their careers were, were over, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and now here they are literally in, a, in an I quit match in their hometown where, they're, where they met like 40 years ago. It's like, it just there's no story that you can even like, even if you write it, like you can't write it that good. Right. Yeah. It was just a, su such like a natural ability, but yeah, just, it was great. Yeah. The finish was just brutal to watch. I'm like, Oh my God. Like, I, I was cringing watch it. Um, but yeah, the finish was great. Um, you know, the interference made sense. Sometimes, sometimes you just kind of, they throw people out there, but in this case it, it totally made sense. And yeah, I, again, overall, this was just a great episode of Dynamite. I just want to throw it out there. And and, and yeah. I do want to add on something that we haven't mentioned yet. They're trying a lot of new things as far as production-wise. Like mm -hmm. when Renee came out uh, in the beginning of the Kingston Okada match, I'm like, I've never seen this in pro wrestling ever again. Add that to what we saw in Raw with that long one shot. I'm like, man, the, like, like, it just feels so different, but in such a good way. Yeah, like you're you're talking about the Sammy when they followed him through the group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the way yeah. back. It segued perfectly into the next uh, – yeah. You know, th no, that's really good. And I like the fact that they're trying different things. And the, the one thing that I really liked was, you know, we remember that moment at WrestleMania 18 with Rock and Hogan mm -hmm. and that crowd going nuts and they were doing nothing except standing across from each other and looking, yeah. you know, back and forth. We were getting a little bit of a similar moment, obviously, maybe not to that grandeur, but we right. were getting a little bit of that similar moment and and Christian took it away from yeah. him. Yeah, I noticed that, yeah. Yeah, it took it away from them and got that heat, and they went, yeah. "Oh, son of a bitch! We just want to, you know, we want to <laughs> scream and cheer and yell, yep. you know." Yeah, even uh, when when his music came on, uh, when everyone was singing along to Edge's theme, oh yeah, his oh, music kind of cut him off. It was like, "Oh, that's great! You didn't let him sing it." Hey, yes. rock goosebumps, man, goosebumps. Uh, just and you know, I got nervous during this one, Jimmy. I don't know if you remember, but a while back, Edge cut a promo on Raw alluding to his final match potentially being in toronto before he mm -hmm. left the company and he kind of was alluding like hey i could i may retire at that point and then i was thinking to myself oh my gosh we're in toronto what if this is his last match what if this is the end and so i kind of i didn't i wasn't sure edge was getting the dub tonight and so him winning even meant more and i felt like the comeuppance for for christian was everything you'd want um 
I don't know. I just, I loved it. I, I, I guess I'll, I'll let you have final thoughts on this one because it is in your hometown, but also I have a quick question for you. Mm -hmm. If someone passes out in an I quit match, what happens? Is it over? You're the referee. So I got to ask you, what's the, what's if, the... They, if they can't answer, technically speaking, technically speaking, yeah. if they can't answer, then that match, that bell should ring. Yeah. To, if, if you want to get in a shoot world, this is pro wrestling. Right. So sometimes, you know, the suspension of disbelief as we talk about the other yeah. thing that if I'm, you know, you know, me, I, I'm I very much on the referees and I pay attention in little things that I wish the referee. Yes. Hey, Christian, he kept saying, what do you say? Mm -hmm. What do you say? No. When you ask the question, Christian, do you quit? No. That's the question that you have to ask. I know it's a little thing and people are going to say, oh, yeah, potato, potato. But it, it, to me, yeah. it makes a difference. Yeah, it does. Because it's it's kind of he's punking him out a little bit more. Do you quit? Are you a do quitter? You, yeah. You know, what I do, try to what imagine. You, yeah. What do you say? Yeah, I'd like fries with that. That's what I said. Yeah. You know, like, but, what, what is the question? <laughs> and, like, the, uh, and these yeah. kind of matches, though, is it like, and then talking to a referee, and these kind of matches, though, if you ask, though, like, hey, do you quit? And they say yes. Is that the end of the match? Or do they have to say, I quit? You have to yeah. say, I quit. Yeah, right? I quit. You okay. have to say, I quit. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I like, to your point, it is, like, I try to imagine, like, you know, if you're competing with a friend in anything, like, if I was you know, trying to race a friend and we're running or whatever. And they're like, Hey, do you quit? You want to quit? You're like, no, I'm not going to quit. But it's like, Oh man, you know, what do you think? You know, you make, eh, I think we've done enough. Uh, like, there's see, that kind of like poking you a little bit. I see George there, a little light bulb. No, bulb. like, like no. that'd be a great, <laughs> that'd be a great false finish where like, he said, like, do you quit? And the guy says, yes. The crowd cheers. Yeah. Yeah. But then like, right when he says that, maybe like the guy or somebody attacks the baby face and then, you know, the heel ends up winning. I thought he quit. No, he never said the words. You, I quit. You have to say I quit. Yeah. I like yeah. That. yeah. Yeah. Give him like a little yeah. false finish, you know? Yeah. Uh, so we got a couple things that happened once we went to Rampage. Uh, Bullet Club, Gold, and Acclaim had a couple promos. Um, George, I like these set, these promos. I thought that Bullet Club, Gold, I liked how dastardly they seemed. And I loved, loved, loved that uh, Jay White has Sting's bat and turned mm -hmm. it gold. Yeah. Uh, and I like that he's still poking at Darby Allen. So when Darby Allen comes back, mm -hmm. that'll still be a fresh wound. And I like that the acclaim was serious. Like they, they took this seriously. Like this isn't just like ha 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 scissors scissors scissors. Yep. But like it, we're getting some real feels. What what were your thoughts? I like that they're not just being defined by the rap stuff or by the oh the city insert city here. The acclaim have arrived. You know. So and I I honestly think Anthony Bowens is a complete underappreciated and underrated on the mic. I think that guy is amazing uh, on the stick. Uh, and obviously Max Caster can show that he's not just Mr. Rhyme time, you know? So I, I, I dug it. I really think, uh, I think they're a lot better separately. I wasn't really a big fan of the bang, bang bullet club scissor gang, whatever they were called. Yeah. Um, so I, I like that, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of like trios matches overall. So I like that it's kind of leading to something big. Uh, they probably should unify the championship because uh, they're each like ring of honor, AEW, like, like they're not really being used anyway, so might as well just put them together. And I think that one can be a big, a big nice matchup at Dynasty. Yeah, Jimmy, any thoughts on these uh, promos? No, I enjoyed them. I really did. I I, I like the the condescending uh, pos uh, tone that yeah. <laughs> Jay White has. I think he's finding his stride now. They're finally get, recognizing what they have in him. Yeah, and also, like you said, the acclaim. Now, I like the different tone. They, they, yeah. They've turned that. They turned it up that notch that, that they needed to turn it up. Where you say, "Okay, these guys look like they mean serious business," as opposed to coming out and having fun and, and doing the rap stuff. So, you know, I did. I enjoyed it. Uh, Jimmy, we also had a tag team match: Best Friends versus Hobbs and Fletcher from the Don Callis family. They're moving forward in the tag team tournament for shots at the uh, titles. Uh, again, any. Any thoughts on this one? It's kind of a straightforward matchup, but yeah. any takeaways? No, there, it wasn't a bad match. It was your typical AEW tag team match where, you know, mm -hmm. hey, uh, yeah. we won't enforce the five count uh, when tags are made <laughs> and, you know, and kind of fudge the numbers when everybody's outside the ring or everybody's in the ring. But uh, again, it all depends on if the crowd is enjoying it and they seem to be enjoying it, especially after a long night. They were, you mm -hmm. could tell they were getting a little tired after a while, but yeah, they were still there for this one. 
Yeah, George, any takeaways here? Uh, uh, I, the right team won, uh, but yeah. I do kind of feel like Hobbs and Fletcher both have bigger things than this. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm glad this team won just because it feels like Hobbs and Fletcher aren't really like an actual tag team. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if uh, – are is, is what's-her-face uh, in the tournament, 3.0, 2.0, the Menard and Parker? No. Like, why are they there in the tournament? So it, that's my only, like, kind of pet peeve as far as, like, why is Hobbs and Fletcher, who don't really have much tag team experience in the tournament, but, you know, they're not. Uh, obviously, like, Cassidy and um, Tremperetta, they're yeah. at least their best friends. But, you know, obviously the team is the actual Chuck, Chuck Taylor and Beretta. But, I mean, I, I, I other than that, it, it, it was the match was what it was, and it was perfectly fine. Yeah, I, I hope for bigger things for Hobbs and Fletcher, both of them. I uh, feel like they're kind of waiting for their moment. Uh, but the main event was kind of the big thing here. Willow and Statlander versus Hart and uh, Blue. Uh, they had match and street fight gear, which I thought was fun. Uh, things broke down when Hart eventually accidentally hits Blue with the spike. We got tables. We got thumbtacks and more. Julia Hart eventually taps out Statlander. Uh, George, this was a fun, exciting way to end the show. I think if, especially if they're live, I mean, that, this is the kind of thing that keeps you there for the end of the show. Uh, did you want to see Mercedes come out? Did you like how this broke down uh, with Hart getting the win here? Any any critiques? I love the I love how it finished. I love that this team won a lot of these straight fights. Uh, my my one of my pet peeves about uh, AW or criticism is like a lot of uh, a lot of baby faces win, a lot of uh, predictable finishes and predictable winners. But in this case, I thought like, oh my god, like I did not see the heels winning at all. So I like that they they won the street fight. Um, yeah, I, I honestly, like, I, I, I really liked it. I really liked the presentation of Julie Hart, uh, Sky Blue. It's minor tweaks, but that's for another time. But overall, yeah, I, I, I love that. I love that they won. Uh, I mean, I'm okay with Mercedes not showing up. I know we all mm -hmm. kind of thought they were, especially with the way the, the Dynamite started. But, you know, I, I, I love I, I like it. I, I have no complaints from this from this match at all. Uh, uh, Jimmy, I, I, have you ever had to referee a match with thumbtacks? <laughs> oh yeah, I've been in the ring with Mick Foley. I was. Oh, know, that's right. Yeah. 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 So, do you do you just have to accept that you're going to take a thumbtack in your hand when you count? Have you? <laughs> is that part of well, the deal? Well, it's part of the deal because you know the guys and girls, uh, they they put their bodies on the line, and if I can't, you know, try to count as best I can for them. The the good thing is, at least for the knees, we had the uh, the sleeves, mm. the padded yeah. knee sleeves. Well, it took me a while to figure out to get the pair of those to, <laughs> after a few years. But uh, when I finally discovered them, I said, why didn't I find these earlier? But yeah, yeah I, I will tell you a quick story here. I remember one time doing a false count anywhere match in Madison Square Garden. I don't remember who it was. Uh, I, forgive me, boys. Who, But uh, they were on the floor. They were on the concrete. And mm -hmm. I kind of eased up on – because anybody who's watched me in the ring, I hit the canvas hard. Yeah. Because I want it's you're supposed to hear it, yeah. And I was kind of not hitting the this the cement as hard, admittedly. And I got it in my IFB where for Mr. Briscoe and said, uh, Jimmy, I know it hurts, but you got to hit the you got to hit the concrete harder because those guys yeah. are putting their bodies on the line. So you know what? If you got to take a thumbtack, you got to take. A, um, as far as the match itself goes tonight with the ladies. With all due respect and hats off to them because they laid it all out there. It just didn't think it fit tonight because we saw that that crazy I quit match. Mm -hmm. I don't think we needed a street fight afterwards. That's the only thing. Not that they didn't do a bang up job and 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 really lay it out there and not put themselves on the line and have a and like you said, the right team went over here. I just again the, the night wasn't right for it for me, anyways. My question here, and, and Jimmy, I'm going to circle back to you, and George, I'm going to ask you the same question, so think of your answer. Three hours, Rampage right after. What are your thoughts on if they just moved Rampage to right after Dynamite? Would you prefer just three hours now? Do you like it separated? I know on Raw we talked about three hours is a lot of time, but at the same time, tough to get people to tune in on a Friday, but also like, are you going to stick around for a rampage after a dynamite regularly? What are your thoughts on the timing? Should they just make AEW three or dynamite three hours and get rid of rampage? Any thoughts on how tonight went as far as time goes? Well, I like the idea of making dynamite three hours and not making the third hour rampage because rampage 
doesn't have the allure that dynamite does. And usually mm-hmm. you, you present talents that don't normally make it on a Wednesday night. That's a, that's yeah. the unfortunate part of it. But uh, if you made dynamite and you had those talents that are not getting TV time that you'd like to give TV time to uh, making dynamite three hours may work. It still yeah. is a lot of wrestling to take in in one night. And it, we see that with, with raw, but the one thing that raw does well is they separate the matches and they give you enough time to breathe in between with video segments and promos and all sorts of other stuff. And, and again, uh, it's a tough call. It's a tough call because there is a lot of wrestling throughout the week, not only with AEW and WWE, you have, you have TNA, you have other, especially the hardcore fans will like to stream NWA and MLW, GCW, everybody, OVW. There's a lot of it out there. Yeah. Yeah. George, what are your thoughts on that? Would you prefer, well, let me ask you this because I think a lot of people to Jimmy's point, there's a lot of wrestling on TV and and I feel like sometimes less is more, but if you're a company like AEW, you want more time. You don't want to give up an hour if TV is giving you a chance for it. Would you be more inclined to watch the three hours if it was all on Wednesday, as opposed to two on Wednesday, one on Friday, or do you like it separated like that? What are your thoughts from the timing standpoint? I think three hours is a long time to have to have for one wrestling show, at least yeah. for me. And I go back to when I was a kid, three hours were meant for pay-per-views, right? So I always thought right. that was like the special attraction. Oh man, I get to watch wrestling for three hours now and you know, raw being two hours or SmackDown being two hours. So I, I, I like to, for it to keep it no more than two hours. Raw is what it is. Obviously they're getting paid tons of money by USA to, to have that third hour. I think it's going to change once I go to Netflix or anything. Uh, but I think, Three hours is a little too long. Two and two thirty is a little long. I think two hours is probably the best uh, for that. So just keep it at two. Have the extra one. Rampage is kind of a little bit of a throwaway, kind of a shotgun Saturday night, Sunday night, or Sunday night heat kind of show where it's like you have the showcase of the wrestlers. You don't really have the match of the year kind of matches on Rampage. Keep that what it is. Uh, so I, I'd say two and one. Do you watch Rampage regularly? I yes. don't, just so you know. It, I, it's I do. not a um okay i i I do Uh, i do but it's not must watch much must see tv like it is like like i'm watching raw on monday i'm watching dynamite on wednesdays um sometimes i'll watch rampage on sundays or mondays if anything like i don't feel like i missed anything by not watching it on friday i i work in a my work whether it be with wrestling or other things typically has me away on fridays so i miss it and then by the time i'm able to watch it it's like collision has started or we're getting into pay-per-view mode. So it usually just at that point, it's like, I'm not going to go back. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and, and so still- I would be more likely to watch it if a AW- if dynamite was three hours, but I agree with you. Two hours feels like the right amount of time. Right. And, and just, just to be clear for those in the United States who aren't aware up here in Canada, a rampage is uh, well, dynamite airs on the sports channel here, TSN uh, mm-hmm. on Wednesday nights, but they offer Rampage and Collision on their streaming service. They're not on live on their television programming. They have five mm-hmm. channels, TSN 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, but they don't air it live. You have to go to their online streaming service to watch it live. Yeah. Hmm. So uh, in the chat, if you're still with us, or if, I mean, I guess in the comment section, let us know. Uh, what would make you more likely to watch that third hour? Not what you think is best, but what would make you more likely to watch the third hour if they added it on to Dynamite or if they kept it on Friday? Uh, Max, don't worry about uh, uh, coming in late. We appreciate you showing up either way. Uh, we're, we're about ready to wrap up, though. So uh, uh, as we do, uh, Jimmy, uh, overall thoughts on this week's Dynamite slash Rampage and where can the world find you online? Well, for the most part, I, I enjoyed the night. Uh, there, of course, you know, no wrestling show is perfect, and there is some little ups and downs. But at the same time, I believe that they are turning a corner and they're heading in the right direction. We, j- I just hope that the numbers pick up as well, because the the one thing I want them to do is stop catering to that niche audience and assuming that everybody knows and grow your audience. That's the only way they're going to, you know, justify all these big signings they get is whether they move the needle or not. And I think they are moving in the right direction. Just take your time one step at a time and keep the course. And uh, as far as where you can find me, obviously here on Wednesday nights and uh, 
and Monday nights, usually uh, with Triple J. And uh, you can catch the Roughing It Up podcast with my good brother in stripes, Brian Hebner, and I, and RJ, who holds the glue together. Uh, last week, we had Matt Morgan on. Great episode. This week, we have Hornswoggle, a.k.a. Hey. Dylan Postal. Oh, man. Uh, I don't want to give anything away. Some great road stories because I got to ride with Dylan for, for a little while there, and it, it was fun. I will say I can't believe he got him into an overhead baggage compartment on an airplane. Like that. I, have picture, I have a picture to prove it, but, uh, you know, again, we had a lot of fun and you can catch my ref and rants on all my social media platforms from Monday to Fridays. Uh, again, usually roughly, I try to keep it around a minute just to have a little fun, whether it's a critique or put something over. And again, not to tear down, but to help tighten screws that I think to be night tightened. And one little thing I'm just going to spit out there for people on the internet, because, you know, it can be a rough place. Mm -hmm. at times you know because there is a lot of negativity but people like to play with me on twitter a lot but when i play back you know they usually search on google how to quit the game but mm -hmm. you know i you know i'm very quiet don't mistake my my uh reservedness for weakness because if you if you push me to the point i will push back let's put it that way <laughs> Uh, don't don't pick fights with the guy who's spent his whole career wrestling. Come on, I don't like I don't like fighting. I you know that's not me. That's not <laughs> me. But sometimes sometimes people try to push buttons. And there there was one of the one of the I, I hate to bring it up here when we were talking about the uh, the Ronda Rousey thing earlier. Somebody said your com when I made my comments about Vince McMahon. They said, well, what if you you know maybe they should serve you a subpoena. Let them go ahead. I got nothing to tell them. I don't know what to tell them. You know, so yeah. Uh, well, Flova Voice, by the way, uh, also a wrestling name coach, once says yeah. that you need to ask him, Do you quit the game? <laughs> Jimmy, not you me. Need to ask them if they quit at, uh, at, at, at times, I just say, You know, enough's enough. Uh, eh. yeah, somebody's just trying to trying to push buttons, and uh, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, if I get a jerky response, I just don't respond to it, but uh. Mm -hmm. George, here's my yeah. problem. Sorry, George. Yeah. You know, but here's my problem. Sometimes I like to have a little fun and entertain mm -hmm. myself sometimes <laughs> with responding. And sometimes yeah. it turns into uh, they, they just won't stop. And then it's like, OK, enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't just just be nice to people. I don't know why it's so hard. I, but uh, exactly. But, but Jimmy, you do a great job and you defending yourself as well. And so you keep it up and everyone else cut it out. Uh, George, uh, I thought you did a great job again. Everyone, yes. let us know uh, what your thoughts were on George. Uh, hashtag bring back George. But, George, overall thoughts on the show where can the world find you online? And uh, feel free to put over the fact that you've got a wrestling channel. Oh, I do. Uh, uh yeah, I, I thought it was a great dynamite show. I think they are moving a step in the right direction, trying out new things. Uh, everything just kind of flows a lot better. We're just seeing a little less of the randomness uh, that we usually saw in, in AEW Dynamite. I mean, it's okay for like a rampage, but for Dynamite, I think it needs to be all hands on deck. Uh, so I like that we're seeing a lot, a lot more of that, a lot more video packages. And it, if I, whenever we somebody says like, oh, we need more video package, we're not saying it for us because we know who everybody is. We wanna, we want AEW to grow. We want them to get the million viewers, million and a half, two million viewers. Like that, that that's a win-win for everybody. Not just it, it by them getting more viewers, it's not gonna mean less viewers for the WWE. Like we want just everybody to win, just overall. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say that out there. But yeah, great dynamite. Hopefully, um, everything continues next week. Uh, you can find me on my personal social media, G H E R M O Z A G Hermosa, uh, Instagram, Twitter. I do have my own wrestling channel, the wrestlingchatter.com. Today we just premiered a brand new interview with the guy in the middle right here, uh, interviewing Al Snow. Yeah. So that that was a nice little fun chit chat. He talked about you know the wrestlers on on Netflix and talking about the OVW school. Uh, I don't want to give too much away because I want you guys to all watch the interview with uh, Jack Farmer and Al Snow. But uh, a lot of fun things in the horizon for Al Snow that I'm personally excited to see because it sounded pretty freaking interesting. Yeah, it was a fun mm -hmm. chat, and you can follow me at Real Jack Farmer across all social media. And uh, as George mentioned, uh, just chatted with Al Snow, who was a really good guy. Jimmy, you you know mm -hmm. Al. Very well. Uh, I know Al very well. And that, my my question for you is, did you get fun, Al, or did he get riled up about a certain subjects? That's all I want to know. I don't give any specifics. I just want to know because I'm going to go listen to it. I think it, we got some, we got fun, Al. I started off Al. by talking about his, his Twitter jokes he likes to make. Oh, my so. goodness. He's just a blast. I, I, you know, you talk about fun guys to be in the locker room with. Al was definitely one of those guys. 
And I did ask him, uh, uh, one of my questions was, does he feel like he was portrayed on wrestlers fairly? Because he's so funny on Twitter, but he seems like a grump on wrestlers. So uh, <laughs> I, asked, I asked him. Did you, did you, uh, one, one, quick, uh, one last thing before yeah. we I know we're keeping everybody long here, but uh, <laughs> no, because uh, Al's a great, I love Al, man. It's, yeah. He's awesome. And did you guys bring up the Tough Enough thing? We chatted Peter, a little bit with, about uh, with Pewter With Pewter and uh, no, and no. But I did leave it as a because I, I do on my channel we like uh, cover a lot of books. Mm -hmm. So once I read yours, Jimmy, I'm gonna invite you to be on the show. But I, I told out I'm, once I read this book, I'm gonna invite him back on so we can do a little book review, and that's gonna be a little bit more wrestling related and wrestling centric and all the stuff. Again, not to keep everybody here. Quick story <laughs> about that though, because if everybody remembers, that was uh, Elson was running the tough enough, and then uh, mm -hmm. Kurt did the thing with uh, Rodemeyer, was it? At first, and then uh, he, he said, "Who else wants yeah, a yeah. shot?" And Daniel Pewter put his hand up, and he came in the ring, and we all looked at each other, going, "What the hell is going on here?" <laughs> you know, everybody's going into business for themselves, and he had Kurt in that key lock, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Kurt was not going to tap out for to, for the life of him. He would have rather lost his arm mm. than yeah. tap out on television. And Al's in the corner, and I'm looking at Charles, <laughs> and we're both in the ring. And when they fell to the ground, and Kurt landed on top, I don't know why. I did it. It just, I don't know if instinct kicked in. It wasn't a predetermined thought. I said, he looks like he's down. I'm going to count three. So I counted three real quick. Yeah. And, and got out of it. And everybody keeps telling me, who told you to count? I said, nobody. I just did it. And then I thought afterwards, what an idiot. It was an amateur fight. All I had to do was count one. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know, I wanted to talk to him about that. We only, we only had a certain amount of time. So you had to cut. Yeah. I had to Unfortunately, I didn't have more time, but I told him I'd love to talk to him again because he was he's very entertaining. I definitely recommend everyone check it out uh, on the wrestling chatter. Right. What's mm -hmm. the what's the Twitter for that? So they can uh, T TW chatter. TW chatter. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a great chat. It's we we chat about all follow right stuff. now, actually. Um, but uh, yeah, you can check that out now. And um, that does it for us. So until then, make sure to follow at Wrestling Inc. for all your wrestling news and. Of course, make sure to check out Friday's After Smackdown show uh, where we'll be back. So until then, everyone, I am hitting the end stream button.